I think because I never actually worked in-house at a newspaper, I don't have those nostalgic memories so much. I've mm -hmm. always looked forward because that's where the opportunity always has been. Let me just grab a pen, a good pen. This week, uh, I want to look into the future. I want to think about the future of political cartooning. So I thought the perfect person to talk to is my friend Ann Telnus, the second woman to win a Pulitzer Prize, who uh, has always been on the cutting edge of cartooning and also one of the first uh, political, political cartoonists to pretty much devote all of her work to the online audience. So, I am. Hi, Matt. <laughs> You are currently just finishing up teaching a class in political art, not cartooning in particular, but political. Well, it's called commentary through cartoons, but you know, we encourage them to try different mediums, but they're mostly students from um, the character animation department of uh, California Institute of the Arts. And there's a whole new generation coming up. Yeah, and actually I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because um, my class has 13 students in it and uh, 10 of them are women. So that's a lot different than when I went there because I started out as a character animator. But maybe the tide is turning. Maybe the next generation will be overwhelmingly female, which would be... Well, yeah, hopefully. I mean, if this class is any indication, I have to tell you, my, my best students are women. One of the other things when I think about the future of cartooning is, uh, I mean, a few years ago, I didn't even understand what the word meme was. I think those all qualify as political cartoons, but they, they're operating in sort of a different modality than your traditional political well, cartoons. Yeah, I, I would disagree with you on one point. I don't think they're all political cartoons. Some of them have editorial comment in them, you know, right. and that's totally legitimate. Editorial cartoons or editorial cartoonists, I mean, really, if you boil it down, what we do is we have a point of view. You were a traditional cartoonist. You worked mostly in black and white. Your, your work appeared in newsprint and syndication. You evolved ahead of a lot of us, frankly, with uh, the post work and being the online animated cartoonist for the post. Well, I don't know if I was so forward thinking. I kind of got bored, <laughs> but um, I thought, well, I'll try and see if I can animate these or create. I mean, I really didn't, I wasn't looking to just animate the cartoon. I was looking to translate an editorial cartoon into animation. I think that the, the big paradox for sort of cartoonists these days is that never before have the tools been sort of more flexible. You can do a cartoon on your phone or your iPad. The distribution or the barriers to distribution have never been lowered. All of that's in place for like a real golden age of cartooning. The one part that is missing is that how you turn that into money and make it something that pays. Mm -hmm. In animation, there was a very famous golden age of animation. Um, in the early 30s and 40s. I think we're kind of at that point now. You know, we, we suffered a lot of losses with the newspapers, but now we have, you know, we have a, a big plate in front of us. We just have to decide what to do with it, you know? <laughs>